Tonight's top story, Bonnie weakening over the Pacific, but it still remains strong. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 7th. Across the world right now, Bonnie is the still the strongest storm and refusing to die just yet, although it will be starting to weaken more uh, significantly soon. Chabba, the remnants of which are still not dying off either, and Aerie also fighting now a subtropical storm. But in the Atlantic, no areas of interest on day 37 of hurricane season, and so we are left with another blank canvas. Um, and who knows what we'll see next, although I'm not get betting on it being any time soon for significant activity. Eastern Pacific hosts Bonnie and a 60% area of interest that we've marked. National Hurricane Center have gone higher, but interestingly the latest GFS model has dropped the system. Day 54 of hurricane season there, and that's how it looks. In the Western Pacific, subtropical storm Airy off the coast of Japan could still threaten the northern part of Honshu as it heads northwards and the remnants of Shaba could still deliver significant amounts of rain to northern China and North Korea. And in the Indian Ocean we have nothing currently active and nothing expected in the next five days. And that can also be said for everywhere else in the world on this July 7th. So the main feature is uh, Hurricane Bonnie, still a Category 2 from the National Hurricane Center uh, with winds of 105 miles per hour, I think they still had it at, 972 millibars. Although uh, latest images are showing that the eye looks like it may have collapsed by this point um, and dry air may be starting to really get to the storm which we'll witness again shortly on the uh, Eastern Pacific wide shot on that infrared but not looking so good particularly in the last couple of hours. Looking at the wider picture then this is the Atlantic right now and you can see a fairly quiet picture there um, areas of moisture and areas of dryness but in general um, it's a quiet scene unfortunately I can't see it with you because the software is playing up and it's showing me the old imagery from July the 2nd which isn't very helpful at all. In the Eastern Pacific though uh, you can see those two areas, uh, Bonnie of course and that wave that's moving through next and that's going to be something to watch. It's clearly there so it's definitely got a chance even if some models have weirdly dropped it. In the Western Pacific uh, you can just about make out the northern part of that image showing the uh, two X cyclones and what might be waiting in the wings coming up soon a few waves moving across and we're still looking and waiting to see what will happen out of that one wave that would be moving through the Mariana Islands that the GFS had intensifying substantially in earlier model runs. Uh, this is what the Indian Ocean looks like at this point as well of course as you'd expect looking fairly quiet and one that I can comment on properly, the Australian region, uh, which shows a very quiet picture today actually, just a few equatorial uh, showers and a big frontal system about to plough through New Zealand. Uh, but Australia looking pretty calm across the board over there. Well then, uh, sea surface temperatures always changing, always warming up at this time of year, and they are. Eastern Pacific getting nice and warm around the coastal regions in particular. Gulf of Mexico very warm pushing 30 degrees and more in the Gulf and in the uh, Western Caribbean Sea. Uh, the Atlantic is really warming up further north as well in the Sargasso Sea and the loop current, uh, sorry the Gulf Stream looking very good with 26 degree isotherms out at the same longitude and latitude as uh, the northeastern part of the US and Nova and uh, Newfoundland. Indian Ocean very warm as you'd expect, much cooler in the Arabian Sea due to the uh, winds from the uh, west. The uh, China Sea there, the South China Sea, um, a little bit cooler, chunks been taken out of it thanks to uh, Chaba 
And same too for the area where area has been tracking as well. You can see around Okinawa and the Amami Islands temperatures have slipped a little bit. But in the Philippine Sea and the Western Pacific's main development region, things still looking piping hot. Sea surface temperature anomalies, very warm in the subtropical regions of the Pacific and the Atlantic in the west, um, but more towards average in the tropical zones, particularly in the Pacific. Atlantic overdoing it a little bit as well, Gulf of Mexico above average, watch that one for later on in the season. And here is the oceanic heat content and that enormous blob of uh, very energetic and warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico on the loop current and the Western Caribbean looking very good as well. Eastern Pacific still remains extremely dead, although signs of life along the coastal regions of Mexico and the Western Pacific looking decent as you would expect. That's where the powerhouse of the world is for tropical cyclone development. So the computer models, uh, the first one we're looking at here is the Atlantic, would you believe? Uh, because just towards the end of that five day period, you're wondering just what might happen. Well, out of that massive extropical cyclone and frontal systems that move on behind it, uh, we get what might look like a tropical cyclone near the end of that five day period. Too early to call really at this point, uh, but I would keep your eyes on that for a potential spin up. Um, a lot off the well off the US East Coast and the next one takes a look at Bonnie and its future and you can see it tracks across a large part of the Eastern Pacific um, before really dying off and holding on to tropical storm force winds as long as it can it does also make it to the Hawaiian Islands as a remnant and as you can see the GFS is really not fussed on that other wave although other models such as the ECMWF particularly forming it into a substantial tropical cyclone or hurricane. Earlier GFS models did have it becoming a major hurricane as well so um, I guess we'll just have to take, a, take it by day by day. And the Western Pacific looking like this, you can see Chabas energy and Aries energy moving off towards the north. Airy there affecting the eastern coast of Japan could turn back into a tropical cyclone even uh, as it moves along the coast of Honshu. So we'll have to wait and see on that one, but it will probably remain subtropical, delivering tropical storm force winds and heavy rainfall to the area and that potential next tropical cyclone forming in the Philippine Sea. And this is a look at the precipitation totals in that area as well. And you can see there northern China near the North Korea border, uh, high amounts of rain still from Chaba. And then behind it, towards the end of the seven day period, another rain event comes in there, delivering more rainfall to areas affected by Chaba, which could lead to uh, potential flooding issues there in northeastern China. Look at those rain values seven inches from the remnants of Chaba directly, and 10 inches from that system behind it in China. In Japan, from Airi, we're looking at around five to six inches of rain there. There, and that's around uh, 150 millimeters China there 150 to 200 millimeters from Chabas remnants in the longer range we are once again looking at the Atlantic there and you can see that system plowing through northeastwards it's near hurricane force winds whether it is even tropical or not is a question mark uh, but that's just something that we're looking at in that next uh, this is now the uh, five to ten day period uh, sweeping across the Atlantic. Nothing else in the basin though, so don't get your hopes up for anything like that. Uh, but it ends up shooting off northeastwards in a typical fashion towards Europe. And there's a look at the remnants of Bonnie, and once again, like I mentioned, moving through the Hawaiian Islands, barely traceable by that point. The next system, barely traceable here as well. Um, even if it does become a hurricane, like other models are suggesting, uh, it will most likely die off at a similar area uh, to Bonnie eventually, and won't make it as far as the Hawaiian Islands. So, Eastern Pacific looking fairly dead after that, actually. And the Western Pacific watching these potential cyclones. GFS has had this for a while. Uh, two large cyclones affecting Taiwan there and another one forming in the South China Sea affecting Hainan and Southern China. Uh, both of them look rather weak uh, but uh, fairly large and of course this could change a lot. GFS of course has changed its mind on this from the previous forecast. Uh, couple of days ago where it wanted a very strong typhoon. It can change just like that. 
At this point, uh, that's the most important stuff done with, so you can check out our Force 13 store, scan the barcode, and that will take you straight to our store page, where you can find out uh, what we're selling, basically. Pillows, and shirts, and animations, on request. No ultra long range, because there is nothing on the long range right now, so no silly models today. And we're on this day for July 7th, 1986, well, we had Tropical Storm Derby, which was dying off in the Eastern Pacific, didn't even make it as far as uh, Celia, probably, maybe. And Peggy, which was a powerful Category 5 storm, was peaking on this day as it was making its approach towards the Philippine Islands. It eventually struck Luzon as, I think, still a powerful Category 4, if not stronger. Uh, and one of those powerful 80s typhoon landfalls in Luzon, of which there were very many. So the next name in the Atlantic is Danielle, followed by Earl in the Eastern Pacific. We are looking out for this year's iteration of Derby, and in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Songda. In the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citrang, although it may not arrive for quite some time yet. 34 storms so far this year, just a reminder of the average 92 storms per t for the year which means we've still got two-thirds of the year to go in terms of named storms. The Australian region, the next name is Darien. Southwest Indian Ocean kicks us off with Ashley. And in the South Pacific, next up is Harley. That's all for tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. <laughs>